arrows flying. Mm -hmm. Bow and arrow in use. Butt kicking happening. And I just jumped up when I was watching. I said, yeah, get him. And I said a bunch of stuff we can't say. Well, we are talking about Lord of the Rings. Rings of Power. Season 2, episode number 3. Oh, third chime is... Chime. Did I say third chime? Ding dong ding. Third time is not a charm. Because while the story is engrossing, it's rough. It's dark. In fact, it's shot so dark, it was a little bit challenging for me to see. Mm -hmm. I am feeling down because that's how they ended the story. We picked up with the Numenorians. We picked up with so many storylines, tricks and traps and deceits and overtaking a regent queen. And there's a lot to say, okay, we've pulled us into the depths. And while there are heroic moments, there are lots of prices to be paid here. Ay, ay, ay. This makes me want to take a break from uh, Rings of Power because I'm now really, really rooting for everyone again. And because the Numenorians have been out trying to fight the good fight in Middle Earth and they're back and all their little palace intrigue is now steeped in all the, we had a lot of losses because of war. So there's a lot of depth there, which I didn't feel necessarily from Numenor before. Now I really can feel them and the Queen Regents in her blind state is trying to lead and lead with a lot of great powerful empathy and humility and forgiveness. And she's still being supplanted, y'all. Excellent leadership. <laughs> and what's going on there? Taking her down. I don't like that. That's not what we want. But it's only episode three. It's all too realistic. Well, at this moment. Because mm -hmm. this is not the end of the storyline. And so I'm hoping we'll have other things that are more positive that are emphasized. This is a tough age, though. The second age. <laughs> this is a tough part mm -hmm. of Tolkien storytelling. Yeah. I really did get pulled in, but I did actually find a lot of the horror elements of this to be off-putting to me because we're in the depths and mm. there are scary things in the dark and, you know, a, a big giant tree troll hill, was a hill troll. hill troll. Thank you. A big giant hill troll was terrifying to look at, but you see right in front of you what you're dealing with versus the creepy crawly huge spider. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot in here that advance the storyline was absolutely necessary pick back up with favorites that i wanted to see that i hadn't seen yet but oh man it was still rough i'm picking up arondir arondir our elf hero mm -hmm. who saves folks from wild people mm -hmm. saves a tilder <sighs> yeah. who meets estrid but then they're also rough it's rough out there in middle earth right it now is. it's just rough yeah 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 but i was glad to see arondir used so well like he's coming in bows arrows flying mm -hmm. bow and arrow in use butt kicking happening and i just jumped up when i was watching i said yeah get him and i said a bunch of stuff we can't say i was cussing so I appreciated a lot of moments, but this is a dark story here. For all those kids who are watching this show, yeah, we, we, can't, we can't cuss because there's so many. So I want to focus on just a quick conversation because there's a lot more of the season to come. I think we'll probably watch it. I don't know if we're going to talk a lot more about it on here just because this is inspired right. by and why, and I'm inspired actually to write a non-fantasy piece pretty soon. Hmm. And so we might start switching over to watch some other things. And we'll be happy to get recommendations from y'all for what to watch. But this is very satisfying for me in terms of we get to see Aaron Deere again. He was one of my fave mm -hmm. characters. And we are seeing orc life where they're asking Adar early on, like, do we have to go to war? And we right. have a little orc baby whimpering right. in the arms of the adult orc saying, do we have to do this? But Adar's like, we don't know if Sauron's still out there. He senses something. He's mm -hmm. on the nose about that. Yeah. So there's a lot happening. Kella Brimborn being willing to sort of know some of the truth from Sauron slash bringer of gifts. <laughs> uh, but not all the truth, but enough of the truth about the High King not wanting more rings to be made. And still in Kella Brimborn's pride of like, I just want to do the best I can and leave my mark on the world. He's like, well, I'll just lie to the king. 
So Sauron slash Ishvatur. I think it's so, like our dear or something. Ishvatur or something like that. Bringer of gifts. Mm-hmm. Or Inator. Anator. Anatar. 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 Bringer of gifts. Anatar. So we are engaged. Let's just go ahead and say, I, I need a little bit of a break from Rings of Power because these first three episodes took us on a journey, which means they did their job as screenwriters, mm-hmm. actors. I certainly cannot stand Sauron. He just does so many great things, just whispering in people's ears, just what right, they need right, to hear right. so that they get more of what they want. And he distorts it so it goes into him. What a player. What mm-hmm. a, uh, supposed to not hate the player, but hate, hate the, the game. Player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I do need a break because it is really violent. But also, there are horror elements in this as people are dealing with the yeah. landscape post Sauron's big mm-hmm. laying waste desolation, big eruption from the end of last season. So <sighs> we're meeting back up with a lot of the humans and things are rough in their camps and there's lots of resentments and grieving and not grieving well and survivor guilt, which I thought was handled really straightforward let's just talk about it and i thought that was refreshing because it's very realistic Mm -hmm. people go through it so i thought it was great to take the time to do that i didn't feel like there were pacing issues in this i could follow along with what was going on i just found that the down ending was so rough that i just need a break and it's discouraging not that i need all of my fantasy to be happy happy unicorns (laughs) floating (laughs) on marshmallow clouds but i certainly do want some hopefulness in there somewhere and we are not really like studying ahead to see how everything resolves and so that's what i often do if i get really into storylines try to look ahead but quickly acting remains the writing no pacing issues here Mm -hmm. and they're still juggling quite a few storylines and as far as music goes I had Mm. more of the background music experience with what was offered this time. No real highlights about intimately connecting Mm -hmm. it to the storyline, but that's okay. Every episode doesn't have to do that. They were moving everything forward really well. In terms of other things let's talk about with spirituality, before we wrap up, I'd love to hear what you think. I was thinking, this one made me think about effort. Um, You know, all these... People are putting in so much effort so to, much. to stay alive, rebuild, to, to rebuild, to, reconnect to lost loved yeah, ones. Yeah, and <sighs> uh, you know, in spirituality, you need a lot of effort to you know overcome all the trappings of the uh, mundane world of you know all the paying bills and who's you know gossip and you know getting ahead in your career and whatever it is. So. Um, yeah, so just uh, you know, effort is a uh, is what came to mind. Of you know, if you want really want to achieve something, you have to put in a lot of effort, and um, you know sometimes you get what you're going for, and sometimes you don't. But you still need to put in that effort and uh, yeah, hope, hope for the best. It's very true, and I think with effort makes me think about the tie-in to previous episode we talked about faith because it requires Mm -hmm. that you be dedicated even if you're not sure of the outcome and so many things we're not sure of the outcome and be honest a lot of us deal with uncertainty every single day and face it and we're absolutely sort of mature about it but sometimes when you put in huge amounts of effort and the stakes are pretty high about what you're trying to achieve like save a loved one's life like we hear from Isildur this story of how Mm, his mother drowned and she put this life giving gave her life effort to save him when he was 10 years old right and she said as a mom i'm like yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely Mm -hmm. i would dive in knowing i wouldn't come back out if i knew that i could maybe save my child right like a maybe (laughs) like i would go um which in turn caused him to to want to put maximal effort yeah into his life regain some sort of, or, you know, like sort of erase the guilt that he has. That's really it. Pay back the effort that she gave. Pay it forward is what you got to think about. And that's what I guess Esther, the companion that he met out there in the wastes was saying, is that uh, that's not something you can repay or pay back. You just have to, that was a gift. Yeah. That was a gift. gift, To accept the gift. Mm -hmm. And then be moved by it, I think. And so it's good that he's moved by it. Right. Right. And then decide what to do from the gift that you're Mm -hmm. given Mm -hmm. so 
I think there are so many things here, y'all. It's just really deeper levels of going through these characters, putting them through a lot of risk. And that's one of the things I'm challenged by in my own writing. I invest in my own characters, can relate to certain things they're going through, and don't love to see them go through the ringer, but you got to do it. <laughs> you have to do it to let these characters grow, to force yeah. them to grow, yeah. Yeah. to force them to face things that they were trying to avoid facing. And so I think this is a, just a great lesson in that because as a viewer, although I need a pause, I need a break, I want to know what's going to happen next. I want to come back mm -hmm. to the story. So well done on storytelling commitment to doing the things that we all need to do to see people go on a hero's journey yeah. and a lot of different people go on a hero's journey with right. us. Right. So I think, do you want to take a break from it or are you eager to watch yeah. the next one? Yeah, I could go either way. I mean, it's, it's good, but it is a lot. So yeah. yeah. The spirit has been moved. The spirit has been tested, mm -hmm. shaken. We've gotten a lot out of this, but I yeah. think for us and for the purposes of this series, Inspired By and Why, it'd be good for us to find other things to be inspired by that connect to some of the writing I'm going to be doing coming right. up. Right. So give us suggestions, if you will. We like to watch things that are on Prime Video, but we also watch things on other things, on other outlets and stuff. And so let us know what you think. Also check out the previous episode where we were talking about episode two of Rings of Power and the episode one also we talked about. So enjoy those conversations. We'll probably come back to it, but we need to go ahead and let ourselves be inspired by other things and put that effort in to find some other shows to start to love on. All right, y'all take care. Bye.